Hi, I'm Dr. Colleen Guilfoyle. I'm a veterinarian for the National Shelter Medicine Team at Best Friends Animal Society. Today, I'm gonna to talk to you about increasing your spay and neuter capacity to save more lives. One question you may ask yourself as I'm presenting these tips and tricks to increase your spay and neuter capacity is, does five more surgeries a day even matter in the grand scheme of things? And I would argue with this graphic, it does. Doing five more surgeries per day, even four days per week, taking two weeks off for PTO, so doing 50 weeks out of the year, um, that's a thousand more animals that can get spayed and neutered in a year. For shelter animals, this may mean shorter lengths of stay, and for the public, it may mean less unwanted litters. The first strategy we'll talk about is uh, check-in efficiency. So this is getting everyone in the door, um, into their kennels and getting ready for our surgical day to begin. So the majority of patients wait on entry. Um, this is mostly applicable to dogs, but depending on your facility, um, it can be more tricky to weigh cats upon entry. Um, and this can look like a runner or a technician or in the right circumstance, an owner getting a weight on the patient. It is essential that we have accurate weights. So when we're using uh, people such as runners or owners, it's important that uh, we have systems in place to ensure that they are weighing in the right units and that all of the limbs are on the scale and those type of things. Surgical drugs should be drawn up as soon as we have a weight. Um, and so this can look like one person pulling up drugs as soon as that first patient comes in the door and continuing to do that process throughout check-in. Our physical exam as a veterinarian needs to evaluate anesthetic fitness. And so this may look different than the physical exam we do as part of a comprehensive examination as a general practitioner. So we're looking at the cardiovascular system, at things like perfusion, do they have any murmurs or arrhythmias, looking at their reproductive status, are they in heat, is it possible they're pregnant, are they lactating, and are there any major factors that would um, preclude them from having surgery. Free medications can include things like gabapentin and trazodone, which can increase patient comfort and also keep your surgical suite quieter when you have a high volume of patients that are staying with you for the day. But one question uh, we can have is how do we do this efficiently? And I really like using these little tackle boxes. And so in the vertical columns, there is patient weight ranges and in the horizontal columns, um, there is different types of drugs. So in this example, it is uh, carprofen, gabapentin, and trazodone. And so um, the person that's administering the medications is likely the same person that's getting the weight. And so they get the weight, look at the weight range their patient belongs to, and administer the medications, ideally in the lowest stress way possible. Eliminating extra charges such as in heat or pregnant or lactating or big dog or small dog um, it can uncomplicate your check-in process a little bit. Um, and also reducing the amount of paperwork the clients have to do once they arrive to your spay neuter clinic can save a lot of time. There's software like Clinic HQ that can be super helpful in um, getting all this paperwork done ahead of time. But I would work with your software to see if there's any way you can reduce the amount of time that's spent um, doing paperwork and the client arrives. A goal for your team is if your surgeon is the one doing check-in, which implies they don't have to be, you may explore ideas like another veterinarian that's on site, spends the first hour of their day helping with check-in, or maybe if you have veterinary student externs, they can help with some of this check-in process. But if your surgeon is the one doing check-in, we should have 30 minutes or less between check-in and the first patient prepped on the surgery table. And this reduces the amount of time that your veterinarian can get pulled into other tasks. It also just helps establish the flow for the day um, right as soon as you get started. The second strategy is achieving flow. So we do this by reducing time between the surgeries. The goal is that the surgeon changes their gloves and immediately can begin their next surgery. There's a few different strategies that can help your team achieve this. One is mixing males and females, which can help uh, your prep and induction team um, stay with the pace of the surgeon. Another is a technician or somebody trained um, can open pack, select suture and blade, and prep the gloves for the surgeon for their next surgery. 
And finally, it's critical that we are prepping the next patient while the surgeon is closing. And so this can either look like two surgery tables or it may look like um, an induction and prep table that includes every single thing um, except for maybe a final prep when they move into the surgical suite. Some homework for your team, uh, use a stopwatch or your phone stopwatch to measure the time between the surgeon completing the tattoo on one patient and making the skin incision on the next. Our goal is to keep this right around one minute, maybe two minutes. Um, and I think by doing this homework assignment, you'll find um, opportunities to decrease the, that amount of time. I included this video that one of our technicians took. It's a time-lapse type video from one of our um, pop-up spay and neuter clinics. And what I want to focus on in this video is how you can see the surgeon in the middle standing in one place and the rest of the world circulates around him. So to achieve this flow state, this is the type of environment we're looking for. Um, the surgeon doesn't really move and everyone else swirls around them to help make it happen. The third strategy uh, for increasing your spay and neuter capacity is clearing your recovery mat sooner. Um, some strategies for doing this are early extubation. So early extubation is defined as extubation upon the return of a palpebral response. This indicates the return of cranial nerve function and the patient's ability to protect their airway. This is a little different from what I was personally taught, um, but what we found is that delayed extubation can cause discomfort due to increased laryngeal tone, which can result in more dysphoria or laryngeal edema. The second idea is um, when we return patients to their kennel. And so in this picture, you'll see four cute puppies. One is intubated, the other three have been extubated upon return of the palpebral response, but they're not ready to go back to their kennel yet. So how do we determine when they're ready to go back to their kennel? So once these puppies have lifted their head, um, we would consider them ready to go back to their kennel. The third strategy here is volunteers. So volunteers in the recovery area can be quite helpful at increasing your bandwidth when you have several patients on the recovery mat. It can be helpful to have a technician that leads recovery or someone with a lot of experience with anesthetic recovery that kind of coaches and guides people on what to do, how to do it, and when to do it. But excellent volunteers may be pre-veterinary students or retired nurses um, or anyone with a lot of interest in learning more medical. So surgery techniques. What are the surgical techniques you can use to decrease your surgical times as a veterinarian? And so I'm not gonna go into specific detail about these, but I will provide some resources that cover these uh, techniques. I'm not covering them in this video because I really wanna focus on things that you can change tomorrow in your spay neuter clinic to increase capacity. And right now, high quality, high volume spay neuter training is limited. But if you would like to be a mentor for high quality, high volume spay neuter, please send us an email at our contact information at the end of this video. And um, we would love to play sort of matchmaker if we can collect enough of that information. Here are a couple great resources to do some additional reading. The textbook high quality, high volume spay and neuter um, and other shelter surgeries by Sarah White is a, the resource on all things spay and neuter. And excitingly, now in shelter medicine, we have a journal of shelter medicine and community animal health. And um, in the first few issues, it does appear that um, high quality, high volume spay neuter topics will be um, prevalent. Finally, I wanted to offer our shelter medicine protocols, which may be helpful for you. There is some information about high quality, high volume spay neuter in there and um, CPR, which can definitely be helpful um, in any sort of surgical setting. If you have any questions about what you saw here in this video, or if you have general questions about shelter medicine, send us an email at sheltermedicine at bestfriends.org. Thanks for watching. I hope uh, we inspired you to do a few more surgeries each day to increase your spay and neuter capacity to save more lives.